Wake up! Wake up, wake up, wake up! Up you wake, up you wake, up you wake, up you wake! This is Mr. Senior Love Daddy, your voice of choice. The world's only 12-hour strong man on the air. Here on We Love Radio 108 FM. The last on your dial, but first in your hearts. And that's the truth. So we're going to talk about this movie called Do the Right Thing. Uh, my name is Jesus Lopez. My partner here is... Michael. And Vanessa. And uh, like I said, we're going to talk about uh, a few different aspects of the movie, how it made us feel, uh, and why we think you should you know, give this movie a try and go watch it yourself and see what you think. Because uh, it does, it did get us to talk about um, you know, this uh, ongoing conversation that uh, we're going through in America about uh, you know, racial tensions and whatnot. So, uh, so uh, Michael, you want to start things off? Yeah, so it um, definitely covers a lot of racial tension. It's all basically racial tension. Dago Wab, Ganny, Garlic Bread, Pizza Sling, and Spaghetti Benin, Vic Damone, Perry Como, Luchado Pavarotti, Solo Meal, Non Singer, Motherfucker. You gold teeth, gold chain wearing, fried chicken and biscuit eating, monkey ate, baboon, big thigh, fast running, high jumping, spear chucking, 360 degree basketball dunking, titsoon, spade, mulling yarn. Take your fucking pizza, pizza, and go the fuck back to Africa. You little slanty-eyed, me no speaky American, own every fruit and vegetable stand in New York, bullshit Reverend Sun Young Moon, some Olympic 88 Korean kickboxing sabadam bitch. You Goya bean eating 15 in a car, 30 in an apartment, pointy shoes, red wearing, menudo, meet a meet a Puerto Rican cocksucker, yeah, you! It's cheap. I got good for ice for you. Now catch it. How I'm doing? Chocolate, ego cream drinking, bagel and deluxe, banana for this Jew asshole. Yeah, so it um, definitely covers a lot of racial tension. It's all basically racial tension. There's a scene at the end of the movie where it's uh, it's basically uh, these two obnoxious um, you know characters who are African American. They go into South Pizzeria and they're you know, jamming their tunes, and it's like. Anytime you're in a restaurant and somebody does that, it's it's obnoxious, like it's unnecessary. So, you know, surely enough, the owner of the restaurant, Sal, this white Italian guy, he tells him, like, hey, turn your, you know, turn your, your radio off, and uh, he doesn't. So Sal just loses his shit. It's been a hot day. He's, you know, it, the racial tensions are high that we've been speaking about, you know, and uh, so he just busts this radio with a with a a, a, a bat. Yeah, baseball bat. Um, and after which, you know, they can, they go at it, and it's just a lot of people fighting a lot of people. Um, the cops get involved, they accidentally kill, uh, you know, Radio Rahim, this character. I, I don't think it was accidental. I think it yeah, was. It's yeah, very, it's very, I, I don't know. I, a lot of, the, a lot of the, uh, the elements in this film are ambiguous. Yeah, to say the least, and I kind of like it because, I don't know, I, I tend to, I... I, I was raised in a way where you kind of agree with cops. Like, yeah, some abuse their power, but for the most part, they're good people trying to do the right thing. Yeah, I disagree with that completely. I, I think that, yes, they are some people trying to do the right thing, but a lot of times they're abusing what, you know, they, the, the authority that they've been given. Right. And, uh, you know, this film raises those questions with, you know, did he intentionally kill him? Was it accidental? Was it out of fear? I mean, the movie, it's real specific, but... Um, it yeah, means a it lot does, to be imagined. Right. It, it does you know, play with your mind a little bit, uh, and that's one of the interesting aspects of this movie, but, and it kind of ties back to what we're saying about the plausibility of this movie, like, it's so plausible that it's relatable, like, a lot of these scenes, you're just like, oh shit, like, I've seen that play out uh, in different, you know, aspects of my life at work. Um, Spike Lee played the character Mookie, and in one of the scenes, he um, seems to incite a riot, but at the same time, he draws the attention off of a character, uh, Sal, who was being attacked. So it comes, it raises the question, did he actually do the right thing? Because you could take it in several different ways. You can see it as like he's inciting violence, and then you can also see, well, he saved the white man from being attacked by the African-American. Yeah, I, I think that one of the reasons why it seemed so real was because Spike Lee, having grown up in Brooklyn and the movie being uh, uh, set in Brooklyn, it gave him a lot of insight to what the people and characters uh, felt and uh, uh, reacted with, and so I, I think that it, that's what provided more of the realism was that it was like a um, something like from himself, you know. I, um, I don't know how to say it. Um, it was something personal from him that, that he was uh, relating to, to to the audience. Yo! Yeah. He 
you almost knocked me down, man. The word is excuse me. Ah, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Not only did you knock me down, you stepped on my brand new Fuck white Air Jordans that I just bought. And that's all you can say is excuse me. Are you serious? Fuck. Yeah, I'm man. serious. I'll fuck you up quick two times. Two times. Who told you to step on my sneakers? Yeah. Who told you to walk on my side of the block? Who told you to be in my neighborhood? I own this brownstone. Who told you to buy a brownstone on my block in my neighborhood on my side of the street? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, what you want to live in a black neighborhood for anyway, man? Motherfuck gentrification. Well, huh. fuck As I understand it, this is a free country. Man can live wherever he wants. Free country? Free country? Man, oh I should fuck you up for saying that stupid shit alone. Hey, yo, man, your Jordans are fucked up. Damn, man. You might as well throw them shits out. Them shits is broke. Man, they looked at the good before he messed up. He did this shit on purpose, man. He was even talking about your mom. Oh, I heard that shit to me. He's so fine. Yo, man, how much you pay for him? A hundred bucks. American dollars. A hundred and eight with tax. I give him a hundred headaches. Look, you lucky the black man has a loving heart. Next time you see me coming, man, you cross the street quick. I'm out of here. Yo, man, bring his feet. Yo, George, take his bike. I should make you buy me another pair. Black Panther, whoop his ass. Take his bike. Kick his ass. Man, you lucky I'm a racist black man. Otherwise, you'd be in serious trouble, man. Serious. Fuck him up. Still, why don't you move back to Massachusetts? I was born in Brooklyn. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, is this movie worth watching? I think uh, the movie is worth watching, although I didn't uh, very much enjoy the movie myself. When I first watched it, uh, I, um, I took it as it's, it's adding more to the racial tensions rather than solving them. I didn't think it was giving a... Uh, proper response to what the solution is um, and so for that for those personal reasons I didn't like the movie although the movie did have great acting it, it the character seemed very real the storylines were too in-depth for, for each character but it it definitely seemed real and I, I didn't get um, uh, put off by the acting I didn't get put off by uh, a lot of the uh, storyline it just uh, it drew me in and so yeah, it was a good movie. Um, Spike Lee did a great job as a direct as a director. Um, he was very young when he made this movie. He was in his 20s. And so um, to make such a good movie that was historically and culturally significant would, um, uh, I mean, that would, would make any director happy to, uh, to have that on his resume, and especially at such a young age. So uh, it definitely is a good movie. Although, you know, like I said, I personally did not like it. I'm of the mind that when you watch a movie, it should be an escape uh, from reality. You know, it's something just you do for entertainment to calm, you know, to calm down, wind down for the day. Uh, so just by nature, I don't really like movies that are too preachy on something. Uh, same reason I don't like things like Jessica Jones. I just feel like the show's too preachy. It's, it's a message that I. It is a good message. I would just rather it be not be portrayed through a show that I want to watch because I don't like being preached to. So that's how I felt about this movie. I'm more neutral about this movie. I, I did think there was fantastic acting and the directing was phenomenal, but it, it lacked story, it lacked content for me. And Not a lot happened, it was just a lot of interactions and while I could appreciate that from kind of like an SNL fan, just kind of like these little cheeky interactions between people, they were amusing to watch, but there wasn't enough substance, like you said, behind it to like warn or another watch. And it's kind of a long movie, it's like two hours. Yeah. yeah, so basically, if you want to watch it, and if you're a fan of seeing basically what should be portrayed today, then I would say yes, go watch it. But if you're like me, who gets hung up on the little details, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. It's two hours waste of your time, basically. <laughs> yeah.